Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly back with another How to Draw tutorial, and um, today I am going to be doing a lesson on how to add shadows to an illustration. I did a video a while back about how to shade videos in, and I found out that what people were really uh, interested in, many of them anyway, uh, was uh, more of a video that was talking about where do the shadows go. So that's what this is uh, uh, going to be all about. Um, to begin with, I'm starting to shade in the lower side of uh, the uh, upper section of the arm. And what this means is I have kind of made a decision that uh, the light is coming from the top, uh, going down, casting shadows on the underside of things. Now, it could be coming straight down from the top. I'm deciding it's that it's coming down just a little off to one side. So the decisive uh, casting of shadows is going to come on the underside of all these objects. So. Without uh, trying to, uh, you know, achieve perfection in terms of the shading here, I'm just uh, beginning with some light uh, indications of where the different shadows will fall. Always on the undersides of things, and, you know, I think um, studying from life, uh, it should be pretty self-evident or sort of natural that when the light is coming from the top, all the shadows uh, fall on the lower edges of objects. So uh, this lower part of the chest, of course, is not going to get very much light. I'm shading that in. Uh, now, many of you probably, if you've had art lessons before, you've had your teacher tell you, start light and then go dark, right? And I think that's, you know, a very good principle to follow. So what I'm doing here is doing a sort of a uh, slightly toned in, um, you know, I'm going to go over the whole thing one time, uh, just deciding on where the shadows are going to be, and then I'll go back in and uh, get a little more into darkening things up. I don't know about you guys, but one of my problems when I was younger is I was always a little too tentative about my shading uh, or just drawing in general, and the um, I would never go very dark no matter how long I worked on a drawing. And I think uh, over time I've learned that sometimes you need to go uh, a considerable, considerable bit darker. There, there should be at least some parts of the drawing that are quite dark indeed so as to create some contrast. Um, so as you see, I'm continuing to work uh, uh, along the lower sections of all the different components of this uh, robot. And some of you might have, you know, seen the thumbnail and like, well, are you going to be teaching us how to draw a robot? Well, no. Uh, but if you want to, if I want to show you where to put shadows, there has to be some kind of an object. A lot of times teachers will like, you know, put an apple on a table, right? And say, okay, here's where the shadows fall on this apple. I was just trying to think, what, is there any object that would be more interesting visually uh, than an apple for people to learn this particular uh, lesson from, and so I, I went with this robot. Um, as I said, the light is maybe coming just a little bit off here, and that means that shadows, uh, if you're going to choose one side to add just a little bit of extra tone to, it's always going to be this um, left-hand side of each one of the components. Now, I'm not going in super dark because, uh, like I said, primarily the shading in this instance is... Um, uh, from top to bottom, or he's on the lower edge of things. Now, one thing that's going to be a little different is that because of this chest area is casting a shadow, I'm imagining that uh, it might cast a shadow that would come all the way down on top of this uh, other leg. And so what I'm doing, and people may think this is a little strange, but I'm going to go ahead and shade in this entire leg, imagining that the shadow of the body, because, you know, that's got to go somewhere, uh, the shadow of this big bulky uh, torso section is going to come down on top of that leg. Now, that's a kind of a bold move, and once you decide to do it, you really need to commit to it. So what I'm going to do is try to create um, added tone right in here to sort of beef it up a little and, and create contrast between this front leg and this rear leg. So I'm darkening this in quite a bit. Um, but, you know, as I said, as uh, many art teachers tell you, you should sort of gradually build towards your very darkest parts of the drawing rather than uh, going super dark right from the start. But again, you know, every time I say something like that, you should do this, I always think, no, there's no... There's no one single way to do anything in art, right? And, uh, you know, if you have developed a technique whereby you go bold and dark right from the start, Go for it, you know. I'm just not. Uh, 
I really can't create these uh, laws of drawing that are always true in all instances. But it sort of does make sense when you think about it. Easy to start light and go dark. Very hard to go dark and then erase back toward light. Although that is, you know, depending on what tool you're using, that is possible. So um, I think we've basically covered the uh, general locations of where the shadows go. And I hope that this has helped people who are sort of like, I never know where the shadows go now. There's just one more thing that I want to sort of focus on here. And that is, uh, sometimes it's not a matter of like, all the shadows are all on one side. Sometimes there's sort of an intermediate zone of things that are partially lit, um, but not completely white, right? Uh, so this section of the chest here, I think might fall into that uh, area. This, these second sections of the arms might be sort of partially shaded, not getting so much light on them because they're sort of vertical surfaces. And uh, the same might be true of this uh, sort of uh, section down here at the bottom of the abdomen. I'm going to lighten this up here. And uh, so, yeah, it, it can help to have some sort of uh, areas that are not com either black or white, but sort of gray tones uh, in the middle. And what I'm going to do at this point is go ahead and uh, move on to drawing the drop shadow. Some of you may have heard this term for when you want a, a character to be placed on a surface of some kind, the ground uh, in this instance. Um, I'm dropping in a shadow here, hence the term drop shadow. <laughs> the brilliance, Mark Riley explaining it for the masses. And that's why they call it a drop shadow. Uh, anyway, I'm dropping this shadow onto the ground. and uh, The key thing here, I mean, some people will get kind of obsessive about uh, what part is creating what part of the shadow on the ground. And you can, you know, and you may be rewarded with extra um, realism if you're, like, really focused on, well, this is the arm part, you know, and then this is the, to the, the torso part that's creating this shadow. And there's probably going to be uh, secondary bits of shadow here. Like I said, and this is where this uh, directional aspect comes in. If the light is coming slightly here, then the shadow is extending a little further over here, and then the whole thing sort of shifts a little bit. So, um, you know, as a general principle, you do need to make a decision about what, where is the light coming from, and then make sure that all of your uh, shadows agree with that, uh, or, or, or are, are consistent, right? Um, if I had the light coming this way, and then the drop shadow is shifting off in this direction, people might not notice it immediately, but something in your brain might register, hmm, looks a little off, something a little strange about this drawing. So this gives you the basics of where the shadows need to go. What I'm going to do is uh, move into time lapse to tighten this up and just sort of go to uh, figure out where my darkest uh, zones are and, and finish off this illustration. Then we'll come back and talk about a uh, second version of uh, the robot that I'm going to do over here, uh, which is showing light and shadows uh, using a completely different um, direction, you know, with the light coming from a different place. So, let's get into it. All right, well, you can see I added quite a lot of extra stuff there, including the classic YT-184. People in the know, they know what that's referring to. Uh, otherwise, you see a lot of weathering going on here. Um, I think that's a topic for another video. I'll be sure to get to that at some point. But for now, hopefully, uh, you've got a clearer idea of where the shadows are located when you have a light source that's coming from above. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the other robot. Okay, so you can see I have, uh, you know, essentially drawn the exact same robot in the exact same pose. Uh, the reason being I want to show what happens when the light source changes, and this time the light will be coming up from below. So we're going to be getting a little bit of that classic, uh, you know, when you're a kid and you take the flashlight and you shine it up at your face to get all those spooky shadows. Some of you, it might not be when you were a kid. Some of you are still doing it, even right now while you're watching this video. Um, in any case, this is uh, what I'm going for. All of the upper surfaces suddenly get these shadows. Um, and uh, it, I thought I would do it this way so that you could almost compare side by side 
uh, how the exact same uh, object can be lit in two different ways. Uh, so I'm going in, kind of going with the same approach that I did before, uh, and uh, going not super light, not super dark, dark. I'm kind of going for a mid-tone at this stage. Um, the curved surfaces, they will gradually go from, uh, you know, kind of darkish at the top and then lighten up little by little as they come down. You can maybe see what I do with the uh, top of the, the rounded surface of this robotic forehead. The robo-forehead, as we call it. Um, you're not going to have a sharp edge to the shadow. It's going to be more blurred uh, f from dark toward light. Um, and then here I'm doing the upper surface of one uh, of the other one of the shoulders. You know, the, I, I must admit that this design, this robot design, is very uh, kind of basic. You know, a lot of people might look at this and say, "Come on, man, you could do a more detailed uh, robot than that, surely." Um, but I, I did it kind of on purpose with these very flat geomet geometric shapes, so as to make it really clear what I was doing um, in terms of uh, adding the shadows. And uh, you know what I did before where I said that the, the, some of these vertical surfaces um, can have a kind of a mid-tone? I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing, uh, going for a real light uh, uh, gray right here uh, on this vertical surface, taking care to let this lower surface down here uh, stay quite... Um, white. You know, the white of the page is going to come right through there. Now, you know, I think basically you're, you've gotten uh, some of my approach from the previous version. Maybe I don't need to go real time through every last part of the second uh, robot, but let me go ahead and uh, I'll time lapse through a little bit of it and uh, if it occurs to me that there's other things that I could explain, you know, that made this different from... Oh, wow. Well, sorry about the interruption there. My video camera actually ran out of memory in mid-sentence. Oh, the nerve of this camera, uh, or the idiocy of me for not uh, deleting the files uh, before uh, I started doing this video. But anyway, I think you got the basic idea of what I was going to say. I'm going to time-lapse through quite a bit of this and then come back to uh, explain if there's any significant differences in terms of uh, uh, the shadows uh, and, and you know the basic technique that I'm using uh, to create uh, the sensation that light is coming up from below. All right, you know, so I think mainly the biggest difference that I noticed in terms of um, the actual shading going on was how this uh, leg is casting a shadow. You know, if the light is coming up from below, it's going to cast a shadow across the other leg, which creates a kind of a different situation. Uh, than we had in the other drawing. But otherwise, you're really just kind of flipping around everything. Uh, you know, the darkness was here, so this time the lightness is here, and so forth. Um, just pay attention to where you think shadows would fall, like this little um, ball joint back here is probably going to be mostly concealed by sh the shadow of the uh, the torso that's coming up over it. I'm going to do one last thing here that has really not so much to do with shadows as just making a drawing pop. And uh, what that means is I'm going to drop a big black um, uh, area of tone back here to really help this pop out and accentuate the areas where the uh, the white of the paper comes through. And I think you'll see that it helps uh, give us this feeling of the, uh, you know, the robot is walking at night, the light or it's a fire or something is down near the ground. So let me go ahead and do this and I'll come back to explain um, how I did it. Okay, so you can see what I did is I took uh, black ink, uh, or you know, you could use a black marker, paint, whatever it is, to uh, blacken this in. And then I went back and adjusted all of the shadows, uh, darkening them in a bit more. This often happens when you're working on an illustration. You change one thing, like I changed the background, and I had to go in and darken things up so that the shadows would hold their own. Um, I, don't, I don't really see this video as something where you're going to follow along with me line by line more, just explaining the basic principles of where the light sources are and how that can result in a drastically different look for what is essentially uh, the same drawing. I hope you found it useful. If this was too overwhelming for you, let me know. I'll make a more basic video, hopefully not just uh, an apple 
sitting on a table, but something that gets these principles across without being quite so involved. But I do want to thank anyone who has supported me by picking up any one of my books. We got Miki Falls, we got Brody's Ghost. I saw this at my son's uh, Scholastic Book Fair the other day. I was like, sweet! I don't know if anyone was buying it, but it was there! And that counts for something, and this is uh, Mastering Manga. I just heard that this is out in the UK. So all of my viewers there uh, in the UK, go ahead to your local bookstore, see if you can find it there on the shelf. It should be available. Of course, it's always available electronically uh, in ebook form, you know, Kindle uh, for the iPad and so forth. But let's go ahead and wind this one down. Thank you so much for watching my videos, for subscribing, for uh, supporting me the various ways that you do. I think it's time, though, for me to lay down the pencil. I want to thank you for watching watching this video. I hope you found it useful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.